Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. How should a Christian respond to being in a loveless marriage? How should a Christian respond to being in a loveless marriage? The term loveless marriage can describe several situations ranging from a loss of initial feelings of love to the experience of a violent abuse. And of course, in the case of spousal abuse, the abused spouse should seek help through legal and emotionally supportive avenues. Physically removing oneself from the situation is often necessary while ongoing therapy takes place. An abused spouse should never resume living in the same house with a former abuser who has not proved his or her trustworthiness. But uh, for the purposes of this teaching, <clears throat> Excuse me. For the purposes of this uh, article or this uh, teaching, we will uh, define loveless marriage as one which no physical abuse takes place, but uh, in which one or both spouses have lost all affection for each other and live as silent roommates. I'm sure you've seen this or you've heard about something like that. God's design for marriage was uh, revealed in the Garden of Eden. When God created a woman for Adam and brought her to him as a helper in Genesis 2 verse 21 to 24. And the word translated helper comes from a Hebrew word that is also used in describing the help that God gives. Think about Exodus 18 verse 4. It says, and the name of the other was Eliezer for the God of my father said he was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And also Deuteronomy 33 verse 26 says, There is none like unto the God of Jeshuran, Jeshuran who rided upon the heaven in thy help and uh, in his excellency on sky. Psalms 33 verse 20 Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. So do you see the the word helper comes from something describing the help that God gives. So a wife's God-given role is to assist a husband in the tasks that God has given him and provide support, wisdom, encouragement, and sometimes deliverance just as God delivers uh, us from different situations. And the husband's role is clearly laid out in the Bible in Ephesians 5, 25, let me just uh, read a couple. The Bible says, Husbands, love your wife, or love your wives, as uh, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Loving his wife is not a suggestion for a husband. It is a command. Any husband who is not working to display selfless, Christ-like love towards his wife is in direct uh, disobedience to God's word. And if a husband uh, fails to do this, his prayers will be hindered. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 3, seven, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to your knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of uh, the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Are you seeing this one? So guys, sometimes a loveless marriage is the result of being unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. You can be unequally yoked. The Bible told us this. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with an righteousness and what communion has light with darkness and the unbelieving spouse couldn't care less about obedience to God's word in those cases the apostle Paul gives instruction 
if the unbelieving spouse consents to remain in marriage and uh, is not abusive, the Christian should stay and demonstrate the love of Christ. 1 Corinthians 7 uh, verse 12, it says, But to the rest I speak, I know the Lord, if any brother has a wife that believes not, and uh, she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which is an husband that believes not, and if he pleased well to deal with her, let her not leave him. You see this one? And of course details go on and on. And the first fruit of the Holy Spirit listed in Galatians 5 verse 22 is the spirit of love. When we have no human love to offer, we can call upon Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to give us love and to help us love our spouses uh, just as God loves the church. It is doubtful that Jesus felt warm, emotional affection for the men who were nailing him on the cross. Yet he asked the Father to forgive them and he died for them anyway. Jesus died for everyone. Think about uh, Luke 23 verse uh, 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and on the other left, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. See, Jesus was forgiving everyone. And he tells us in Romans 5, 8, But God commanded his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Jesus' demonstration of love can be an inspiration for all of us, even in regards to our marriage. And if counseling is available, loveless marriages can benefit from the wise. And uh, of course it's good to get a biblical counselor. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 11 verse 14, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of uh, counselors, they safety. And also Proverbs uh, 15 verse 22, it says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Sometimes a marriage grows stale through neglect and ongoing inconsiderate behavior of uh, which a couple may be unaware an outside perspective can quickly spot problem areas and call attention to them and if the couple is willing to work a loveless marriage can quickly uh, return to loving even even if one spouse refuses to cooperate with the counseling the willing spouse can benefit from being alone And uh, an objective viewpoint can sometimes help one's spouse to see things differently and therefore can respond in better ways to the unloving spouse. Just like a rock thrown into a pond changes, a thrown into dysfunctional cycles creates a new patterns of response. Let me give you an example of the way one's spouse can change the course of a loveless marriage. If let's say Sue no longer uh, screams at John when uh, he is rude. He must react to her gentle response in a different way than uh, he has previously done. Instead of excla- uh, uh, escalating the, the anger, he scales back at his boorish behavior to match a more mature attitude. Her quiet smile and refusal to engage in, in fights. This one showcases his own selfishness and he often responds with less hostility. He just said, okay, if she did this, then I should not be this selfish. And the fight cycle is uh, interrupted and a new style begins with less stress and more kindness. Think about Proverbs 15 verse 1. It says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Over time, that new healthier cycle can evolve into affection and the couple learns to enjoy each other once more. And uh, there are quite a number of uh, things that a Christian can do to reinvest in a loveless marriage. Number one, 
you can set healthy boundaries, you can learn when to walk away, disengage or reject hurtful words or patterns, refusing to engage in fights that uh, lead nowhere is one uh, way or a boundary is one way to, to create a boundary can, that can strengthen a marriage. Don't fight. Number two, pray for each other. The best way to forgive and love someone who has hurt us is to lift him up or her before God. Ephesians 4, 32 says, And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. God is uh, for the marriage, so we should uh, know that we are praying in accordance to his will when we pray for restoration of love and hope. Think about 1 John 5, 14. It says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Number three, watch your words. Watch your words. We tend to believe that uh, everything we speak is right. And if we find ourselves regular times bashing our spouses or complaining about marriage, we will start believing it. Wisdom dictates that we practice controlling our tongues and speaking only that which is true and honorably. Honorable, all right? Right and pure. Let me read to you uh, Philippians 4.8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on those things. Think on the good things. Stop thinking about the bad things all the time. Number four, pay attention to the little things. When a couple first uh, falls in love, they notice every little thing that they are and they are very eager to please each other. However, if we are not intentional about continuing those practices, we fall into a root and uh, take each other for granted. Restoring love to a loveless marriage is done one little uh, thing at a time. We should discover the spouse's uh, love language and their work to meet that need every day. And uh, as a Christian, we should respond to a loveless marriage by refusing to participate in the behaviors causing the problem. Even if one spouse shows no interest in re-establishing an emotional connection, a Christian should do what is right. We are not called to retaliate or to return evil for evil, but to overcome evil with good. Romans 12 verse 21 Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Friends, we are called out from the world to be the light bearers. The Bible told us in Matthew 5.14, You are the light of the world. A city that is hidden on a hill cannot be hidden. And also, you are the salt of the earth. Verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, where shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden underfoot by man. And a chosen priesthood is who we are. We should be that. Think about First Peter 2, 9 and 10. But you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So are you living like a called out priest? <laughs> we should understand that our mission is not to please ourselves but to please our heavenly father. 1 Corinthians 10 32 it says give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God. God is pleased when we endure difficulties always with patience and when we do whatever is within our power to revive a loveless marriage. Is your marriage on the rocks? Do something. Follow some few steps biblically and uh, it will be back again hot because the Bible says you'd rather be hot or cold 
<laughs> All right, that's uh, the end of our Bible study tonight. That's our, the end of our lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you have learned something. You can always uh, download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and to your family. And uh, please don't forget to favorite uh, uh, and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. And if you'd like to uh, learn more about our ministry or even support us, please use the details in our website, keithmwoki.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.